for all y'all's parents that came across the borders and all the oceans, asking me to work for Cesar Chavez, asking me to work for Rosa Parks, asking me to work for Dr. Martin Luther King, asking me to work for President Barack Obama, asking me to work for me, asking me to work for us. We're not asking, we're telling. Can you tell that we... on behalf of all the soldiers who are not free to tell, who are not free to speak, who are not free. And it's for them that we speak. It's for them that we stop asking. It's for them that we keep telling. Thank you for meeting me in the middle. Meet me on the high ground. Uncle, we'll go over your name, my brother. We will make sure you did not die in vain, my brother. We lift up your spirit, my brother. We celebrate your life, my brother. You are an angel, my brother. You watch over us, my brother. You will guide us, my brother. Papa, we will remember your name, my brother. We will make sure you did not die in vain, my brother. My brother. Oh, how I wish, I wish you were here, my brother. Now, I would like to seal the Lord. And Robin McGee, who came all the way from Fresno, thank God. One of our best activists in California, come on up here. And this is important, perhaps the most important part of today's event. And I would like to see all introduce it. Thank you. Robin and I are going to share this list because it's a very, very long. Um, I was going to introduce this by saying that actually uh, many of my friends are here today and don't know this. Uh, my best buddy was killed 11 years ago. He was also uh, serving in the military. He was in the army. He was not. Um, his killing was a civilian killing. It was not related to Don't Ask, Don't Tell. It was not related to sexuality. But because uh, we were best friends and not uh, partners or married, um, I didn't find out about his death directly from the, a military service person that, as his son for spouses and direct family. And, so, and it, was, it pained me for years after that that I had to find out in a very indirect manner um, about his death. And so my heart really goes out to the partner of August Provost who had to find out from the media that uh, the person who, he called, who called him the love of his life um, had been murdered, rather than finding out in the most honorable way directly from a military service person. And that is part of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Um, the following names and stories of LGBT and other hate crime murder victims and suicide victims are compiled from a video produced by Rob Cossel, a video I found on YouTube which has been viewed by over 78,000 people so far. This list is very incomplete. It does not include the most recent LGBT hate crimes, including two recent suicides in April by two 11-year-old boys who were being bullied in school for being called gay and ended up deciding to take their own lives. So I'm reading a teenager's executed for being gay. We in the U.S. can hardly blame the state of Iran for having anti-gay laws in 2005, but here in our home state, our president is still tolerating and enforcing anti-gay laws such as Don't Ask, Don't Tell, and many others. She might be wondering why the bell is ringing, that's a Navy ship bell. And so in honor of Senior Provost, we're staying with the Navy tradition and ringing the Navy ship bell with each name. In Utah, Doug Kohler, 1993. In Maine, Charlie Howard, 1984. In Maryland, Marvin Johnson, 1994. Joey H. Jordan, 1992. In Virginia, Harold Coon, 1994. Henry Gardington, 1999. Garland Leroy Taylor, 1994. Gary Watts, 1994. Henry Weatherford, 1994. Julie and Molly Williams, 1996. An unidentified gay man, June 1993. Another unidentified gay man, September 3rd, 1993. In West Virginia, Vicki Durian, 1984. Nancy Santomero, 1984. And finally in Minnesota, Stephen Fox, 1994. Craig Green, 1993. 
Lord mighty but fortunate 18,000 that were able to marry in that brief window of time that we had here in California. But as a, as a, as a military veteran with a dependent spouse, she's not entitled to any of the benefits that I've uh, been granted as a, uh, the result of my service. The truth. You know, if we want to reveal Thomas, I can get on that military transport with you. <laughs> here, but I will tell you a little bit about her story. Her name is Linda Sanders, and she was an employee of the, of the, the Department of Defense. She was the highest ranking civilian personnel on Camp Pendleton. She worked for Mar a Marine Air Tactical Service Systems. She actually, she actually worked on a GPS system prior to it being available to the public. They initially created a system so soldiers could use that on the battlefield. And also she was a NATO representative for our country, for our citizens. She actually represented us in different places around the world. However, when she when they found out that she was a lesbian, all of a sudden her services were deemed unsatisfactory. And she was kicked out. There's no particular reason you should know who we are. We're no one special or particularly deserving. What we are is part of your institutional memory. That part that spans seven decades and includes every issue confronting our community and every issue confronting our federal government regarding our community, whether it is hate. As she said, my name is Autumn, and I served 20 years in the Navy from 1980 to 2000. I, um, well, I was a fire control man, and that was the title of it, is fire control man. Um, and that was pretty much my whole career. I saved, served on three um, fast frigates. One of them, the USS Gary, was in the Persian Gulf War. Uh, and then my last ship before I got out of the Navy was the USS Coronado, which at the time was the third fleet command ship. In 1996, uh, I ended up, my marriage to my then wife uh, ended, and it was becoming very clear to me that I was going to be um, discussing when I got out of the Navy with a, uh, probably a Veterans, uh, a Veterans Administration psychologist or psychiatrist about my gender identity issues. Because even when we separated, my ex-spouse made the comment to me that you're more of a woman than I am. So she knew, we all knew. Be bold, be proud, be who you are. Because I think for the active duty people in particular, being closeted becomes such a habit. You know, you meet a lot of retirees from the military who are still scared to death for anyone to know, or who still suffer under the silly belief that no one knows. To which I want to say to a lot of them, have you looked in a mirror lately? Um, really. But more than anything, you must be bold and you must be proud. You must see We're here with Will Rodriguez Kennedy, Veterans Chairman of DOD FedWell. Hi, Will. Hi, how you doing? Well, you want to tell everybody what you're going to do today? Yeah, um, uh, my organization, uh, another organization I'm being part of, LCR, has just, has won its case against the last one's hell, and so in the, in the interim, the DOD 
uh, the Department of Defense will be following the policy and they will not be, they'll be allowing gay applicants, so I am going to return to service. I was a corporal in the Marine Corps, and now um, I'm trying to go back. You wanted your recruiters before? Uh, I was a corporal in the Marine Corps, I'm going back. I want to go back. You want to go back here? To the Marine Corps. I got it. Speak for Jerry and Bridget and, and Chris and many of us who watched our movement grow. And then and now after no money and all of this activism of our young gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, it gives us hope. Because we know the future is in great hands. And we know that the torch of activism has been passed on to a new generation. With respect to the review and uh, potential repeal for the Don't Ask, Don't Tell legislation, uh, as I uh, try to point out, this is a law. Uh, this is something that our Congress must must do. Um, I've been pretty clear where I've been on this in my testimony on the 2nd of February last year, that it was my, it's my personal view that we need to move on here. And I believe it's the right thing to do. Century began and was founded in 2009 as a result of the death of Seaman August Provost. At Camp Pendleton, California, uh, the founder, Evelyn Thomas, who just happens to be my wife, was so upset over the fact that this gay seaman was murdered uh, within two miles of us. He was murdered because he was gay. She was so upset over Hi, this. My name is Chris Longacre. I'm with DOD Feglo. I'm was kicked out of the Army for Don't Ask, Don't Tell. And as of yesterday, I was accepted back into the National Guard. I'm Crystal Romero. I am the partner of Chris Longacre. Um, I'm ready to become a shared family and open gay relationship. Um, also, to get you know partner benefits for her to get her ID also, just like me. And for when we have, in the future, when we have kids, we got to have benefits for them. Also, free pregnancy. I am a sergeant in reserves in the Israel Defense Force. I'm openly gay and served as such my entire service. In, since 1993, the Israeli military has allowed homosexuals to serve in all levels of the Israel Defense Force. Previous 1993, well, let me tell you just a little bit about, uh, about my story and my service. Uh, I grew up in a military family. I have to confess, initially, I kind of wanted to go to the Naval Academy, um, Top Gun and all of that, right? But uh, my dad convinced me to take a visit to West Point one day, and we did. And as soon as I stepped on campus, I fell in love with it. Uh, there was something about the history of the place. Uh, you could feel, uh, you could feel the ghosts. You could feel the ghosts of Patton and Eisenhower. And, and so many of these people that had been my heroes since childhood, I knew it's where I needed to be. Uh, West Point didn't figure that out right away. It took me three times applying to get in, uh, but I didn't quit. In fact, I, uh, I enlisted in the Army Reserve uh, when I graduated from high school uh, for that purpose because I, I wanted to serve. Uh, and I wanted, I wanted West Point to see that I was serious about serving. So my first uh, duty assignment was as a combat medic in the 403rd Combat Support Hospital, a reserve uh, hospital in Phoenix, Arizona. And while I was there, I got a call from, uh, from my congressman telling me that I had been uh, appointed to West Point and that I'd been accepted. Uh, there are very, very few West Point grads who would say this, I think. But my four years at West Point were the best, some of the, the best years of my life. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. If I could relive any four years of my life, I would go back and relive those. And that's despite the fact um, that it was a very difficult place to be uh, as someone who for all of my life since childhood had known that there was something different about me uh, and something that if anybody else found out that these dreams of service that I had uh, would be taken from me. Um, I cross-dressed my way through West Point. I'm very proud of uh, my military members. I'm very proud of the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. And I'm very proud to be a lesbian military officer. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Clark Cooper, or some of my colleagues in the Army know me as Captain Cooper. Uh, the Cooper family has been serving in the United States military before there was a the United States. Uh, the first 
a member of my family to die in combat was in the 1630s in the King Philip's War uh, uh, up in New England. So uh, when people ask if there's been a history of our family service, uh, we have been serving uh, our country in an active duty capacity, reserve capacity, or guard capacity uh, in all the branches. Uh, and I'm very proud to uh, continue uh, that history, that tradition in our family. Uh, and continue to do so today. Uh, I have been very fortunate uh, to be an... Be bold, be proud, be who you are. My name is Corey Houston. I was a Fleet Marine Force Corpsman in the United States Navy. I was stationed at 29 Palms in Camp Pendleton. After I was injured, they sent me down to 32nd Street Naval Base. And there I was caught in the barracks room with my partner who was a staff sergeant in the Marine Corps. They tried to court-martial him. They discharged us both with hey, other... Speaking as the executive director of DOD Fed Globe, that is not my intent to reflect the views of my employer, the Department of Defense. Often in my role as the executive director of DOD Fed Globe, I have dealt with a lot of people that have had to deal with serving in silence, and the pain and the hate that they have endured from serving in silence is unbelievable. These people have post-traumatic stress disorder from that law. And somebody in the United States needs to take responsibility for that hate. It's unacceptable. And recently I've been working with people to get training and other things going on in the Department of Defense, and they actually had an excuse for this prejudice. They said, we're not really prejudiced, it's just that military thing. They are so embarrassed, they cannot even say, don't ask, don't tell. I was in the Marines for 13 years. I received a bad conduct discharge due to don't ask, don't tell. And so I'm not able to work for the Department of Defense. But you are. And if you work for the Department of Defense, we need you to come out of the closet. We need you to stand up. We need you to be bold and be proud of who you are. You are protected. Well, I think we're making the transition between working on a statute to working on regulations, you know, working on perhaps equal opportunity policy on you know very various uh, other like partner benefits things that can be fine-tuned and dealt with on a very intimate uh, quiet level as opposed to the national fight which is what you have to deal with when you're dealing with Congress so you know what's next is, is it's, it's a very different fight but it's, it requires just as much resources and, and we you know intend to be around just to make sure people understand that you know there's a lot of work to be done uh, we're gonna be there and, and we need everybody's help My name is Ben Cartwright and I'm the Vice President of DOD FedGlobe, amongst other things. And I just wanted to briefly tell you today my story about uh, formerly being uh, the partner of a uh, active duty service member. It was a very challenging time in my life, um, more so for him, of course, he was uh, fighting overseas for our country and uh, doing all those things, but he was doing all those things in silence and, um, you know, not being happy, you know, doing, you know, taking the greatest honor and doing the noblest deed for our country and not being able to tell who he was and I was invisible to his Not hiding anything and from anyone and be being able to tell people the truth about who you are and what you do on your free time and you know what it is that you like and who you like to be with. Being able to tell my friends in the Marine Corps that you know that I have a wonderful boyfriend and that I want to introduce them to them to bring them to the Marine Corps ball and show them off and be